So Paradox Pokemon are arguably the coolest and most interesting new thing that was introduced in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And while we wait for likely DLC to most likely be announced, it's pretty fun to imagine what more Paradox Pokemon could be like if we actually got some more down the road. That is what I have been doing in a couple of videos on my channel recently, and I'm here to do it once again since you guys have enjoyed it so much, and I have enjoyed it so much, so why don't we go ahead and check it out. So I am really excited about today's video, but videos like this just wouldn't be possible without the support in part of sponsors, like today's wonderful sponsor, Baiyi. Baiyi is awesome because they make it easy to buy awesome products and merchandise that is exclusive to Japan without all of the price hikes that third-party and international sellers will often charge. Baiyi allows you to buy or bid directly from Japanese websites by buying or bidding on them on your behalf. Then, Baiyi takes care of all of the more complex international stuff in between and simply ships your purchase straight to you, effectively removing all of those roadblocks that can often make it more complicated to get imported Japanese products at a good price. They provide shopping from a lot of websites with Pokemon merch as well, and you can find some really cool exclusive stuff there that can be tricky to track down here in the West. So if you've ever had an eye on a cool piece of Japanese merch lately, or just want to take a look for yourself, you can use my link in the description to sign up for Baiyi today, and when you do, you're also going to get a special coupon for 2,000 yen off your first order, which is about 15 yen. US dollars. And once again, a big thank you to Baiyi for supporting the channel and helping to make videos like this one possible. Okay, so in my last video on Paradox Pokemon that I have created, I decided to create a future Paradox form of Cyndaquil, simply because it's my favorite Pokemon and I thought the idea would be really cool and I think it did turn out really cool. So cool in fact that I felt like I needed to return to the idea of creating a future Paradox form of a starter Pokemon, and that is what I have decided to do once again with Rowlet. Rowlet is quite definitively one of the most popular starter Pokemon of all time due to its design and its cuteness and its overall personality, and so when thinking about another starter Pokemon that I wanted to give the Paradox treatment to, Rowlet was a no-brainer. And once again, since I did the future treatment with Cyndaquil last time, I decided to go for the future treatment as well with Rowlet, and this is what we ultimately came up with. Now, as usual, I say we because the artwork for all of these designs was commissioned from my good friend Oscar Belmonte, who does amazing work, so be sure to check him out with his links in the description below. Frankly though, if Paradox Cyndaquil didn't prove this already, then Paradox Rowlet definitely confirms that we need to see some Paradox starter Pokemon, particularly of the future variety because they just work so stinking good. This isn't just Paradox Rowlet though, because of course, like all Paradox Pokemon, it does have a name of its own, and that name is Iron Sphere, because A, all future Paradox Pokemon have the word Iron in their name, so it goes along with that, and Sphere comes into play because Rowlet is not only a round Pokemon, but it also has the word round incorporated into its name and is also very spherical, so I think the name Iron Sphere works out pretty good. It is also an electric grass type, and just like with my design for Paradox Cyndaquil, I decided to give Paradox Rowlet, or Iron Sphere, some of those Maridon-like elements in its design, so it's not purely metallic and purely robotic like a lot of the other future Paradox Pokemon are, which some people have an issue with. So we've added some of that futuristic energy to Iron Sphere's design, similar to what Miraidon has, to kind of give its design a little bit of variety. 
And I might be a bit biased since this is my own design, but if I'm being completely honest, I think this design turned out amazing. I think it's super, super cute. It definitely lives up to that Rowlet level of cuteness in my opinion. And as I said, I just think it proves the concept that it would be amazing to see some paradox forms of starter Pokemon actually happen for real. As I usually do with these Paradox Pokemon videos though, we are now going to shift our focus to the past variants of Paradox Pokemon. And for the Pokemon that I have decided to highlight with a past form is none other than Flygon. Now, when it comes to just making Fakemon in general, I have actually highlighted Flygon quite a lot, from the Tundra forms in my Pokemon Cardinal series, to giving Flygon another evolution in my fourth stage Pokemon Evolutions video, I have actually given Flygon quite a lot of attention, and it all comes down to the same reason every time, and that is that Flygon obviously got shafted back in Gen 6 when it was supposed to get a Mega and then it didn't and it has proceeded to not get any special treatment since then, so I just kind of want to give it some limelight. However, when it comes to the Paradox form situation, I think Flygon works better here than probably all of those other situations that I have highlighted it in before. And that is because if we did actually get a Paradox Flygon, it could look something like this. This is Looming Locust, and it is what Flygon used to look like in the distant past when Paradox Pokemon roamed the Earth. Now, aside from just wanting to give Flygon the limelight, like I said, the actual number one primary reason why I picked Flygon to get this past form is because I wanted to use this opportunity to finally give it the bug dragon typing, which is another thing about Flygon that a lot of people have wanted to see happen in one way or another. And I figured if Game Freak isn't going to give us the bug dragon typing with a Pokemon like Slitherwing, who is not only based on a bug type Pokemon in Volcarona, but also has a very literal dragon-like tail, then I guess I'm just going to have to go ahead and do it myself. So that's what I have decided to do here with Looming Locust. And I've given it the name Looming Locust, basically just because it sounds really cool. The Locust refers to the fact that it is, in fact, a bug type, and the word Looming just gives it that feeling of intimidation and feeling of strength that you don't want to mess with this Pokemon because it's gonna just mess you up if you get anywhere near it. I think this design actually does show how Flygon is a Pokemon who would work really, really well in particular with a Paradox form and with a past Paradox form in particular. I think its base design is really well suited for it. I think it could actually finally give us that bug dragon typing on Flygon like we've wanted if it did actually happen, and it would finally give Flygon the limelight like it has desperately deserved and has missed out on for all these years. So if we do actually get more Paradox Pokemon somewhere down the line in DLC, I feel like Flygon is a very, very deserving Pokemon for that kind of treatment. And for our last Paradox Pokemon of the video, we're switching gears back to the future forms, and I have got a very interesting future Paradox Pokemon for you guys today to finish off today's video. And the Pokemon that we're going to give this future form to is Togekiss. Now, giving a future form to Togekiss might seem like an interesting choice. In fact, it might seem kind of like a random choice, if you will, not only picking Togekiss, but also choosing to give it a future form in particular. Well, allow me to explain my thought process. Before I go ahead and explain all of that, though, why don't we go ahead and take a look at what exactly this future paradox form of Togekiss looks like. And it looks like none other than this. Meet Iron Sadness, and yes, I know that is a terribly depressing name, but it has a very good reason for being so, and that reason is in fact the reason that I decided to go with Togekiss not only as a Paradox Pokemon, but as a future Paradox Pokemon in particular. Togekiss is a Pokemon whose dex entries state that it will never appear where there is strife, and sightings of it have become rare recently. 
This is an allusion to the fact that there is apparently more and more strife within the world of Pokemon at the point in time that we are playing the games, and going along with this, another thing that a lot of people have noticed about the Paradox Pokemon in particular is that due to all of the future Paradox Pokemon essentially being robots, it's got a lot of people thinking and wondering and being concerned for the future of the Pokemon world. What has gone on in the future that has resulted in all of the Pokemon being this way? It's very easy to imagine that the future of the Pokemon world, or at least the distant future, is pretty bleak, and that is why all of the Pokemon have had to resort to becoming more robotic. And I decided to use this thought and commentary from the community, and combined it with Togekiss's nature of being rarely sighted due to more strife being in the Pokemon world, and sort of mush them together to create a scenario where in this distant future of the Pokemon world, where things are very bleak, Togekiss has actually become extinct due to just how bleak this future really is. And that is why this Pokemon in particular does have a more robotic body within this distant bleak future, because it itself has actually gone extinct due to just how bleak this future is, and the scientists and researchers of the time have desperately attempted to try and preserve this Pokemon as a species by putting whatever essence of Togekiss that they can find, now that this Pokemon has gone extinct, into a robotic body to try and keep this Pokemon around in some way, shape, or form. And that is what Iron Sadness is as a Pokemon. It is a desperate attempt to keep Togekiss as a Pokemon species present within the world after the actual Togekiss have gone completely extinct due to the utter and sheer bleakness that this future entails. This is also why Iron Sadness is a ghost flying type Pokemon, and its very sad overall nature is also due to the fact that Togekiss itself is known as the Jubilee Pokemon, and is known to be a very happy, positive, emotionally charged Pokemon, hence why it doesn't appear where there is strife. So now, the opposite side of that coin has been flipped with Iron Sadness, and now that there are no more Togekiss to be had, and there's none of that Jubilee that exists with in the world, it is now turned to the only emotion that it can muster, which is that of sadness. I hate to bring the mood down, but this was a concept that I thought was really, really cool when I first thought of it, and so I wanted to explore it with an actual design, and I think the design itself turned out pretty cool too. So this is something that I definitely would really love to see in the future if we ever did get more Paradox Pokemon. With that said though, those are just a few of my ideas for what more Paradox Pokemon could look like. What do you guys think about these designs and concepts? Be sure to let me know in the comments below, and leave a like on the video if you enjoyed, and subscribe for more if you're new. You can also check out my previous two videos if you haven't seen them yet on what it would be like if we got more Paradox Pokemon with the card on screen. And with that being said, I will be back with another new video as well very soon soon. Thank you guys so much for watching this one. I really appreciate it. And until then, as always, I will smell you guys later.